Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Homestead Journey podcast. This is episode number 14, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us on the Homestead Journey. My name is Brian Wells. I'm coming to you from 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. And if you are new to the podcast, again, welcome. If you've been with us for a while, well, you might recognize or uh, hear something a little bit different. And uh, that is that we're starting with a little bit of intro music, going to be doing a few transition music pieces. Let me know. Um, I'd love to hear from you as to whether or not this adds to or detracts from the podcast. Just trying to clean things up and add a little bit better production value, I guess, to the podcast. Been doing this now for 13 episodes. This is episode number 14, as I said, and I just want to keep getting better at this. And so I've been listening to some other podcasts, trying to figure out what they're doing well. And one of the things that I hear is intro music and transition music. And so I'm going to try that and uh, let me know what you think. The music is actually coming from audionautics.com. So if you want to pop over there and check them out, um, it's royalty free music. And I just really appreciate the fact that there are people who are willing to put out that kind of music and uh, make it free to people like me. And uh, a lot of great music there, so uh, just great stuff to listen to. And uh, anyhow, so audionautics.com is where this music is coming from. And again, let me know whether or not you like it uh, or not. You can contact me at thehomesteadjourneypodcast at gmail.com or you can contact us on our Facebook page, um, which is facebook.com slash thehomesteadjourneypodcast. And we are newly on Instagram. The Homestead Journey Podcast uh, is our name, handle, whatever. I'm still getting used to the Instagram logo, uh, lingo, I guess. <laughs> um, it's a little bit uh, new to me and how that all works, but uh, I'm enjoying it. And uh, so if you want to jump on over there and give us a follow, that would be greatly appreciated as we kind of keep you up to date with the daily um, ongoing happenings here on 3B Farm and Homestead. So this week on the homestead, honestly, not a whole heck of a lot's been going on from a homesteading perspective. Um, it's just that time of the year, and you're probably tired of me saying that, but uh, this time of the year, things definitely do slow down. And so a bulk of our homestead life right now is simply a matter of making sure that the animals are fed and watered and cared for. And uh, so hauling water, hauling feed. I did make a feed run this week. Um, I buy feed from a local uh, producer, um, a local farmer that mills his own feed. And uh, so 20 pounds, uh, so not 20 pounds, 20 uh, 50 pound sacks of hog feed uh, came home with me. And uh, so it, it's always uh, great when uh, I pick it up and he's there. Sometimes he's not there, I just load it myself, but this time he happened to be there. So it's half the work on that end. <laughs> but then when I get home, I have to unload it myself. So. Uh, I guess I could get my son to come out and help me, but uh, usually I just unload it myself and stack it. And uh, because of the size of the shed, it really is, uh, it becomes a little bit difficult to have more than one person in there trying to get in to stack that feed. But so made a feed run this week. And, you know, other than that, we're still in the dreaming phase. As we uh, talked a couple of weeks ago, dream, decide, do. Um, we're still in the dreaming phase, still putting things down on paper and, um, now we need to kind of decide what we're going to do, what our goals are going to be for uh, 2020, and then really attack them with a vengeance. That's that's really the bulk of it this week. Maybe a baby pig update, I'll give you that. Um, we lost a baby pig this week, and I honestly have no idea what happened. Um, I had six thriving piglets, and then uh, the next day I went in and there were five, and um, so... Honestly, no idea what happened. Um, so it is what it is. We're down to five. And uh, unfortunately, it was one of the girls that that uh, that disappeared. So I've got three boys, two girls, which, I mean, it's when I say unfortunately, we will uh, probably castrate all of the boys and just turn them into meat hogs. 
um, unless there's one that shows e exceptional um, characteristics. Uh, generally speaking, I don't keep more than one boar here for a variety of different reasons. Um, but I, I tell you what, though, temperament-wise, this is the chillest, um, most docile crew that I have ever had. I can flip them right over on their backs, count their teats, and not hardly a struggle, not hardly a squeal. And um, I don't know. It, I, I'm really, really loving these pigs. But uh, definitely not going to keep all uh, three boys intact. So we'll have to make some tough decisions. And I may not keep any intact. So more to come on that. But uh, that's this week's homestead update. Uh, the homestead happenings here on 3B Farm and Homestead. So on last week's episode, we talked about seven myths or misconceptions that people have with regards to homesteading. And uh, the funny thing was that this week on a couple of different homesteading forums or groups, and I'm a member of way too many of them probably, but uh, I happened to see two instances where I felt very validated <laughs> in what I said last week. And, you know, after I put out last week's episode, there was a part of me that I kind of second-guessed myself a little bit because I, one thing I, I, I want to do on this podcast, and that is to be very positive and very encouraging to people with regards to the homesteading lifestyle. I want to encourage and to help uh, as many people as possible uh, to be more self-sufficient, self-reliant, and sustainable. And so... I was I was a little nervous last, that last week's episode could be construed as being a little bit negative um, towards towards homesteading, and that certainly was not my goal. But while I want to be positive about homesteading, I also want to be very real about homesteading. And I think in the world of Instagram and Pinterest and 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 Facebook and YouTube, sometimes people have a tendency, and not just speaking about homesteading, but just in life in general, people are trying to portray um, their best life. And so sometimes, again, my this is just my opinion, um, but we're not as real about things as maybe we could be or we should be. And that certainly holds true in homesteading as well. And so that was where last week's episode was was really coming from, from that perspective. And so this week there were two distinct um, threads on, I think they were Facebook groups regarding, or that where I felt very validated in what I had to say. Um, the first was that somebody posted a picture of some of the things that they are doing and, and generating, making on their homestead to sell to raise money and uh and they said something along the lines of this is, and they say this is the quote unquote easy life again somebody who has maybe bought into the bit of a myth that homesteading is the simple life and as we said last week um, homesteading, generally speaking, adds a layer of complication to your life that you w wouldn't have if you were just going down to the store and buying your beans or buying your meat and so on and so forth. Now, there's a lot of benefits to it, and I 100% agree with all of that. Um, but certainly, I see you know some bloggers and and some stores, and you know they're they're kind of selling the quote unquote simple life and I think that's something that is unfortunate because it portrays at least in my opinion homesteading in a light that really isn't real the other um, thread uh, or post that uh, I saw and again I think it was another Facebook group was somebody who was trying to figure out how to make money um, on their homestead and they were struggling financially uh, to support their homesteading habits so to speak and um, so they were asking for ideas, and somebody said to them, well, why don't you get a job? And the reply was, well, because homesteading is my full-time job. And I wanted to drop a link to last week's podcast into there. Because, again, 
um, homesteading in and of itself does not raise revenue. So to look at it as your full-time job, unless you have another source of income, I think that is certainly not a recipe for success. But that's last week's episode. We're not going to rehash all of that ground. This week, as promised, what I wanted to do is spend some time talking about how to homestead while working a full-time job. And I'm coming to it from the perspective of working a full-time off-farm job. Some of you may work full-time on-farm jobs, or you may work multiple part-time jobs that would perhaps require even more hours than a full-time 40-hour-a-week job. Um, So how, as homesteaders, can we balance the priorities of our homestead with our need to somehow generate income to be able to support our homesteads? And so this week, we're going to talk about five steps I think you need to take in order to be able to successfully homestead while working a full-time job. The first thing is that you need to know your priorities. And when I say you need to know your priorities, I mean this in two different regards. First of all, I think you need to know your priorities with regards to life in general. How does homesteading fit within your your lifestyle? Um, Now, as we said back in episode number two, I believe that homesteading in and of itself is a lifestyle. And if you are serious about raising and growing your own food, if you're serious about pursuing self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability, I do believe that it is going to impact virtually every aspect of your life. It's going to impact how you spend your time. It's going to impact how you spend your money. It's going to impact the food you eat. It's going to impact virtually every aspect aspect and area of your life. But having said that, I would not consider homesteading to be my number one priority in life. And I wouldn't even consider it to be number two in my life. These again are my priorities and I am not by any stretch of the imagination saying that you need to adopt the same priorities that I have. You need to understand your priorities is my point. And each family needs to understand their priorities. But I think that that really is your first step. How does homesteading fit within your overall life goals and the priorities you have for life? Now, for me, again, homesteading is not number one. I'm a person of faith. My family, my my wife is, is a person of faith. And so we try to structure our lives so that God is number one. Now, I understand that not everybody that's listening to this podcast is a person of faith, and that's your decision. Okay, I'm not here trying to push my faith off onto you, but because that for us is a priority, we try to put that as number one. Now, folks, I don't always get that right. I don't, but that happens to be my first priority. And so, as I try to honor that as my first priority, that impacts how I spend my time That impacts some of the things that I'm involved in. And as I shared with you last week, my wife and I are very, very involved in our church. And that's a way that we're working out priority number one in our lives. But because we're heavily involved in our church, I'm an elder, she's a deacon, we both sing in the choir, I'm on the praise team, um, and the list kind of goes on and on. We both teach Sunday school. Um, We've been involved in youth ministry through our church. That obviously impacts the time that we have to spend in our homestead endeavors. For me, number two is my family. Now, you might look at it and say, well, homesteading is for your family. And yes, I would agree with that. But as I think about my 16-year-old son, sorry, I said 16. Holy crap. He's only 15. And 16 coming fast. <laughs> when I think about my 15-year-old son... Um, he is involved in things and has interest outside of homesteading. And those are interests that are good, they're wholesome, and are things that I have tried to encourage. So he's involved in music. He plays saxophone. He plays piano. Um, he's involved in Boy Scouts. And because of that, I've ended up as the scoutmaster for his troop. And I'll tell you right now, I, I'm not the scoutmaster of his troop because I love scouts. And, and I do enjoy scouts, but... The, the reason why I'm Scoutmaster of his troop is because I love my son. And so in order to give him priority, 
I'm involved in that. And so that again impacts the time, the effort, the energy that I have to put into my homesteading endeavors. You need to understand how this fits within your priorities. I've made decisions with regards to my career um, that have impacted. In some regards, they've impacted uh, our homesteading endeavors for good. And in other ways, they have sometimes hindered um, our home de- homesteading endeavors. And so, again, it's a matter of understanding those priorities. But not just priorities from the standpoint of how homesteading fits within your overall, I guess, scheme of life. But then within a homesteading itself, you need to understand your priorities. What are the things, what are the the activities that you want to get involved in, the homesteading activities that you want to get involved in, especially if you're just starting on your homesteading journey. You need to understand what is priority for you. Is it more of a priority for you to raise your meat or is it more of a priority for you to raise your, your vegetables? Is it a priority for you to have bees? You know, do you have some kind of um, uh, a chronic health issue that has kind of led you to homesteading? And so you need to homestead with that in the back of your mind. Perhaps you're somebody who has a, a lactose uh, intolerance and you found that A2 milk is good for you. So maybe you want to have a family milk cow. Um, and so that would be a priority for you. So you, you need to understand what your priorities are or are, are going to be on your homestead because you can't do everything all at once. You've got to prioritize. And folks, this isn't something that you do just once, either one of them. Um, as we speak of priorities from the standpoint of life and, and within homesteading itself, you're constantly going to have to be prioritizing and reprioritizing because life happens. Um, as I shared with you before, last year my goals were for our homestead were seriously impacted because I had to give priority to a bathroom remodel that kind of popped up out of nowhere. And so some of the things that I wanted to get done last year didn't get done because of that, re, that bathroom remodel. So again, you're having to kind of prioritize and reprioritize. So step number one, know your priorities. Step number two is to know your limits. And when I say know your limits, that is also, that, that is from a time perspective, it's from a financial perspective. Um, again, once you know your priorities, now you're going to understand where you have money to spend. You're going to know where you have time to allocate to these kinds of things. And again, this is something that you're going to constantly have to be um, uh, uh, reevaluating as you think about your your limits. If you have something that pops up out of the blue, where you have, um, you know, a, a big, maybe it's a big car repair bill. And so that's going to maybe, you know, you have to jump into your savings account. And so maybe something else that you were planning uh, on buying for your homestead is going to have to be pushed off because your limits have changed. But you need to be very, very well aware of your limits. And especially if you're new to the homesteading journey, the temptation is to jump in and to try to do all of the things and grow all of the things and raise all of the things. And if you are coming to the homesteading journey as a result of perhaps a chronic health issue, as many people do, or I shouldn't say many, but some people arrive at homesteading because of a chronic health issue, then you also have to keep that in mind to make sure that, again, you're not overwhelming yourself. If you're somebody who has chronic fatigue syndrome, then you, you know, you've got to understand your limitations so that you're not trying to do too much. But uh, that, that holds true for everybody. Again, that temptation is there and it's strong and it doesn't go away, folks. You know, I've been doing this for for a long time and my temptation is always to try to do more than I can handle, to bite off more than I can chew. And so it's very important that we understand our limits. Um, For me, part of it is, is understanding and accepting the fact that I'm not getting any younger. And yeah, I'm only in my early 40s. Um, but I'll tell you right now, <laughs> today I, I, um, taught snowboarding out at the, out at the local ski area. And, uh, I happened to uh, teach last night as well. And, uh, 
my body doesn't recover like it used to. It doesn't recover like it did 10 years ago. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I feel a little bit more. <laughs> and so we just have to understand and know our limits. The third thing, uh, the third step is to know when to say no. And out of all of the things that I'm going to share with you, out of the five things that I'm going to share with you today, for me personally, this is my biggest growing edge. Um, for people who, those of you who know me in real life, you may find this hard to believe. <laughs> but it, this is the dead honest truth. And that is, at the very core of me, I am a people pleaser. I want to help people. I want to please people. I want to be that person that people can rely on. I want to be the guy that comes in and saves the day. I want to be that Johnny on the spot. And so because of that, I have a tendency sometimes to overcommit myself and to say yes to a lot of good things, but that are things that uh, spread me sometimes too thin. And so for me, learning to say no to even sometimes good things is a bit of a growing edge. But I think it's very important that you learn to do that if you are going to be successful in home setting while working a full-time job. Again, there's just there, there's only so many minutes and hours in a day. There's so many uh, hours in, in a week, uh, so many days in a week, so many weeks in a month, so many months in a year. I mean, your time is very precious. And if you continue to say yes and to say yes and to say yes, you end up finding yourself stretched very, very thin and it is going to be increasingly difficult for you to be able to find success in your homesteading lifestyle. Um, a couple of weeks ago, in one of the organizations that I uh, am a part of, I was asked to um, to take on a little bit more of a, a, of a responsibility. And, you know, again, because I have kind of that ple people pleaser thing <laughs> inside me, I, I wanted to say yes. Um, I really, really did. But I... I made the tough decision to say no, um, that I was not going to take on that additional responsibility. And there's part of me, honestly, to this point, I still feel a little bit guilty because I said no. Um, but I also know that I made the right decision because I don't have bandwidth to do what I was being asked of me. And it's something that, um, again, I would love to be that person that came through and and was was able to, to, you know, rise to the occasion. But right now that would simply, it just wouldn't be good for me. And I don't think that it would really be good for the organization, to be honest. And so I had to say no. So know your priorities, know your limits, know when to say no. The fourth step is to learn to be flexible. Periodically, I will jokingly share with people a made-up proverb that says, blessed are the flexible, for they shall not get bent out of shape. <laughs> but folks, again, life is going to happen. And there are going to be times when life throws you curveballs, whether it's an unexpected automobile, uh, automobile repair bill, or it's a, an unexpected bathroom remodel, or it's a piglet that goes missing, um, or it's a crop that fails, or it's a chicken that dies. Um, life on the homestead is going to throw you curveballs. And you've got to be able to, to kind of roll with it. If you uh, aren't able to be flexible with that, it's going to get you tied up in knots. And, um, and you are not going to find much success. You're not going to find much satisfaction in living the homestead lifestyle. The fifth and final thing that we're going to talk about is, well, it's very closely related to being flexible, but it is learning and accepting that you're never going to get everything done. 
You're simply never going to get everything done. I don't care how much you try to prioritize things. I don't care how much you you plan or give thought to your limitations. Simply put, you are never going to get everything done. Um, and you need to learn to be okay with that. Um, your to-do list, a lot of times, is just going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. Uh, and it, it just is what it is. And so as you are working your full-time job, whether it's on farm, off farm, or it's just multiple part-time jobs, um, there are going to be times when things pop up at work. There's going to be times when things pop up with your kids, with your wife, with your health, and it is going to impact what you can get done on your homestead. And if you don't learn the lesson that uh, you're never going to get everything done, I think what can happen is it can become very discouraging because you look and the to-do list just seemingly gets longer every day. And so that's why you need to keep continually, or you need to be reevaluating your priorities, you need to be reevaluating your limits, um, you need to have that uh, level of, of flexibility, you need to learn to say no, um, but in doing all of that, you still are going to find that you are not going to get everything done, and that's okay. You're not a failure because you didn't get that uh, crop planted. <laughs> you're not a failure because you missed uh, a particular deadline and now you're not going to be able to get those fruit trees planted this year. It's okay. You know, you're not a failure because you weren't able to get your uh, mobile coop built last year. You're not a failure because the greenhouse didn't get built. It's all good. You'll get to it when you get to it, or maybe you won't. Either way, it's all good. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, or even if you haven't enjoyed what you've heard, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me at the Homestead Journey Podcast at gmail.com or pop on over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Homestead Journey Podcast. And if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave us a review on your favorite podcasting platform and also share it with other people that you think might enjoy what we're doing and might be encouraged on their homestead journey. Until next time, everybody, keep up the good work.